Before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to help the channel grow and keep up to date with our latest videos. Hi and welcome to another video by me, FlyJo. Today we're going to look at the Power Automate Flow Actions and the action we're looking at is Apply to Each. Now Microsoft states that the Apply to Each action executes a block of actions for each item in the Import Array. What does this actually mean then? Well, essentially each item in an array will trigger a set of actions before moving on to the next item in that array and that will then trigger those same sets of actions. So let's actually take a look at what this looks like then. So when you add the apply to each to your flow, you're going to see this box. Now it looks pretty empty, doesn't look like it's actually doing anything, right? Well, firstly what you're going to want to do is select your array. Now when you do that, it's going to basically pick the first one when it runs and then do any of the actions within this box. So you can see that this box here, if we add any actions in here and then we've got an array, it's going to pick the first item from that array then run through those actions. Then it's going to finish and go back up just like this little logo is here and then go on to the next item and then run through those actions and then go to the next item and next item until the array is complete. So what we want to do then is add actions after we've added our array. Now let's use an example of an if statement. Let's say we have got a, um, a numbers array come through of one, two, three, and four. And we want to create rows in um, Dataverse if there is a number greater than three. So our if statement could be, if this current item, if the item we're on in our reply to each is greater than three, then we're going to create a row. So our first number would be one. It's going to go into the if statement. It's going to say, does this current item equal to greater than three? No, it doesn't. Then it will run through again. Then you move on to the next item. Is two greater than three? No, it's not. Then is three greater than three? No, it's not. Then when it gets to the fourth one, is four greater than three? It will say yes, and then we can do whatever actions we've got in our if statement. Okay, so we've talked a lot about this. Let's actually see this in action on Power Automate. Okay, so we are on Power Automate, and I've created a flow already, apply to each, and I've got a manual trigger for our flow. What I'm firstly going to do is I'm going to create a variable. Now, this variable is going to essentially just be an integer that's going to start at zero and I'm just going to call it a var count and let's rename this for best practices to count. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another variable and then I'm going to create an array but this time I'm going to create a names array. So let's change that to names array and the names I'm going to use are Joe, Jax and Meg. So when we run this it's going to create an initial variable of count which will be at zero and a names array of Joe, Jax and Meg. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the apply to each. So we've seen this before um, from what we were just discussing. If I click in here, I can then choose the variable names, which is our array. And then what I can do is I can add an action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to firstly go back to my variables and I'm going to increment the variable of var count by one. So we can see how many times we actually go through this. So we start at zero, we get in the apply to each, and every time we go through each one of the items in the array, we're going to increase our um, variable of count by one. So essentially, if we have three names, which we do, we should expect var count to equal three. So before I do anything else, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a compose here. 
and then I'm just going to pass in the var count so it's easily uh, viewable for by us. So let me just hit save there and let's run through this initially. Okay, so let's trigger our flow. Okay, so our flow has been successfully triggered. We've created our variable var count and it starts at zero. We've got our three names, Joe, Jax and Meg in our array. And then we've got our reply to each. And as you can see here, it says show one of three. So the first one is Joe and we're increasing the var count by one. And then the next one would be Jax, we're doing var count by one. And then we're doing Meg var count by one. So let's open this and we can see that we've cycled through and increased our variable by one each time. So we get a total of three. So we've actually got the count of the array that we've cycled through in the apply to each. Now let's do something a bit more complicated then. Let's essentially um, display what we're actually um, passing through and what the actual array is in this current one. So if you click on this compose here and scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's this thing called current item. Now what current item does is it gives you the current item during this run of your apply to each. So let's just run this again and press save and test. Okay, so our flow has run, we've done the count, we've done the names array, and this time we've gone through the apply to each. So if we open our compose two, you can see that it's passing through just Joe. Because in this instance of our apply to each, in this number one of our three, it's grabbing the first item in our array, which is Joe. And we're using current item to grab that and display it in the compose. So if I press next, then we've got Jax. And if I press next, we've got Meg. Okay, so we've looked at how um, we can increase a count. We could looked at how we ha can create an array. And then we looked at how we can add some actions in an apply to each to actually use the current item as well as um, an increase a number variable. So let's actually take a look at how uh, this works with Dataverse. Okay, so what we'll do then is we'll click on edit and we'll get rid of our names array. And in here, we'll do a call to Dataverse. So let's open the Dataverse section. And we want to just do list rows. And I've already pre-made a cats table. So I've selected cats. So we're going to get all of the cats listed in the cats um, table. And then what we're going to do is here, we're going to remove names because that doesn't exist anymore. And then we're going to pass through the value list of items from our cats. So we're now grabbing all the cats and passing them in here. So what I'll do first then is I'll show you what happens when we use current item on a record um, that we've pulled through from the cats row each time. So let's just click manually run okay then we click run and that should run a flow as you can see the apply to each now is cycling through all of the items that we've got back from cats and then we can just jump to our compose to see how many items we've got back from cats we've got four so if i open up our cats table you can see we've got a burmese cat an egyptian male cat a mancoon and a ragdoll cat. So we've got four, so we've got a total of four, so we know we've cycled through the apply to each four times. And if I open this up, you can see I'm showing one of four. Now, we're expecting the name to be here of the cat, right? So we're expecting the first one to be Burmese cat. But if I open up this, you'll see that it's actually the entire row of information. It's in the entire record that was being passed through. So Obviously, we don't want this. We want to be able to target the name. So what you can do here is if you have a look at all this data, you can see that we want this particular um, column. Then let's click on edit. Okay, so we don't want the whole record then. So let's click on X. 
what we want is that name, um, the name column that we was looking at. So if we scroll down here and select name, you can see it's under the list of rows section. Now we're passing in the values here, so we're grabbing all of the records, but what we actually want is that particular column. So let's just select that. And then let's kick off this test. So our flow is currently running through the apply to each. Let's open that. You can see that there are four records still. Let's open the compose and now we're actually getting each name from here. So we've got the Burmese cat and then we're expecting the Egyptian cat to be the next one. So that's how you can select the dynamic data for that particular um, record that you're cycling through at that particular point. It makes it very easy to pull apart data from a record. Then, for example, if you choose to add an update or add a row action in here for a Dataverse, what you can then do is you can pull information out of that particular record. Let's say we want to create a new row in um, featured cats entity and we wanted to check to see if there is an Egyptian male cat and if there is we want to then pass that particular one into the add record action and then create a new record in uh, our Dataverse. We can then easily pull that, we can check it and then we can pass it into the add record action and then update it. So that is how you can easily use apply to each to cycle through large data sets, whether they're uh, created by um, your own arrays within a flow, whether they're pulled from third parties or whether they're pulled from Dataverse. Thanks for watching another video by me, Flo Joe. If you like the video, don't forget to hit that like button or select a video on your screen right now to continue learning more about the Power Platform.